So the other question that comes up very frequently is what is the day-to-day -day life of the shaman in the Western world? And that's an important thing to consider. A lot of people think of witch doctors, people practicing in Africa, shamans in America. Well, you know, this is England, so what's important to realize is this is also part of our history, part of our heritage. We've had shamans in England thousands of years ago. Some of them were called druids. Those before that didn't even have names. And the thing to grasp here is that what a shaman does is he integrates his shamanic practice with his daily life. So he will be doing something to bring in money, to be able to pay the bills, just like anybody else. If he's very skillful, he would have discovered ways to do that, which means everything he does to earn money gives him great pleasure and enjoyment. That's wonderful to be able to do that. The next thing that's important is that you're eating very well, you're doing your good body work, breathing exercises, uh, drinking good quality water. All these things are going to assist you. And then when it comes to the client, you've got a piece of work, there's someone who's got a problem and they want some healing, then you step out of this everyday life. Ideally, it's great to have a separate space you can go into, and of course the earth is wonderful for this. Somewhere where the atmosphere is very peaceful and gentle, and you know you're not going to be disturbed. And in that place, you tune in through your breathing exercise, or your drumming, or your rattling. You're in that trance state, and you go off into the journey for that person. So you are then very much outside of ordinary reality. You're not doing anything anyone can see. If someone was to walk into that yet, they'd see somebody lying down, or maybe sitting up quietly, apparently doing nothing. So the answer to the question is, what is it like day to day being a shaman? Is well, you're still eating, you're still going to the toilet like everybody else. And when requested, you take time out and you go off in the place that you've created for this work and you do the journey and you do the healing, you get the results, you share the information with your clients, they then give you the lovely feedback, which is always a pleasure to receive. Thank you, all my clients, for that. And that's the way you manage your life, that's the way you balance your life. It's possible to have a relationship, it's possible to be a parent, it's possible to be a single person. They're all completely valid lifestyles in relation to this. It's possible to have a full-time job. It's demanding, but it's possible. It's also possible to do this work on welfare benefits. So all things are possible in shamanism. I recommend it to anyone, especially anyone who wants to develop their creativity. Creativity in shamanism. It's possible to be a shaman or a shamanic practitioner and not get into this side of things, the creative side, but it's so much to your benefit if you do. One of the most delightful things to do is to go on a plant walk and keep your eyes open. And if you see any interesting looking flowers or berries or maybe leaves or stems, branches, you make a collection of these items and you take them back and in your quiet safe space you use them to create a beautiful mandala. Something else you can do is you can work with paints and canvases and you can create mandalas and other shapes. You can also just go out into the nature and do a little bit of weeding. You can also take some real time, create a little piece of space in your garden and think like, what am I going to do? How shall I sow my seeds? What am I going to have? Vegetables, flowers? What arrangement would I like? With creativity, the sky's the limit. There's something else I'd like to mention, and that's the Pasanga. And after that, I'll mention the floral bath. So the Pasanga is where you go out on a plant walk, you tune into all the plants, and the ones that give you the, the nod, the, the thumbs up, the yes, you take a little piece of that plant, you come back with a collection of plants in your hand or in your basket, you put all these plants into a bottle, you fill the bottle 50% with water, 50% with alcohol, something like vodka is good enough, that's a preservative. And what you've done there is you've created a bottle and you can use that bottle for all sorts of different purposes. By the use of your intent, you can go out on that plant walk to go picking plants for healing or picking plants to meet a new person in your life for a relationship. Or you can do it for bringing more wealth into your life, changing your relationship with money. So you create this liquid, which has got all the essences of the plants you've deliberately designed and defined for. Then you put a little into your bath water, and if you have a bath, and that's a way of immersing yourself in these new qualities. The floral bath, almost unheard of in the UK, very common throughout the whole of South America and parts of Asia. It's called the floral bath. It's a special variant of the plant walk. What you do is you go out for a walk into nature where there are flowers, and the ones that call you, you take a few of them, bring them back, and then you run a bath. Put essential oils of all the right aromas, the scents that you enjoy the most. 
Sprinkle the bath with all the flowers you've collected. Then when you're ready, step into the bath. What you can do is as follows. You can let go of any qualities which no longer serve you. Supposing you're suffering from fear or anxiety, what you would do is you would scoop with your jug the water with all the flowers. You'd be standing up and you'd be turning anti-clockwise and you'd be pouring the water over your head as you're turning anti-clockwise, you do three revolutions, and the three revolutions you're letting go of the qualities that no longer serve you. I let go of my fear, I let go of my anxiety, whatever it is that you've got. When you've completed that bit, fill up a jug of water, and this time you're going to rotate clockwise. You're going to do three clockwise revolutions in the bath, standing up in the bath, pouring the water over your head, and this time you're inviting all the qualities in that you'd like, maybe love, maybe health, maybe happiness, maybe determination, maybe clarity, whatever it is that you want. So you're pouring the flower essences over yourself and you're rotating clockwise three times, bring all the new qualities you like into your life. Incredibly common, especially in South America, anyone going for a job interview, they'd have a full bath the night before, cleanses the aura, obvious aura cleanse, and then they're getting rid of the qualities that don't help for an interview, they're bringing in the qualities that do help for an interview. Floral bath. Thoroughly recommended.